YouTubers, thank you for joining us again as we tour different aspects of St. Dominic's Catholic Church in San Francisco. If you haven't seen our previous video, it's the topic was on the sacred elements of Gothic architecture, and it should be found in the description below. Um, so make sure to check it out. Today, we're trying something a little different. Um, we're going to be talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus in art. Um, so this is not necessarily specific to St. Dominic's Catholic Church, but um, hopefully you'll still gain something out of it and maybe it will still relate to some of the art that we have depicted in St. Don's. Um, Elizabeth, who is one of the earliest members of our docent group, um, she was there when I was just starting out as a docent. Um, uh, she unfortunately is not here with us today. Um, and so if you have any questions, um, just include them in the comments section below and I will try to get them answered for you. Um, and hopefully in a future video, it'll be um, answered there. Um, so now I'm just gonna turn it over to Elizabeth to uh, do her presentation. Hello, my name's Elizabeth and I'm a docent at St. Dominic's Catholic Church in San Francisco. I'm presenting today a short slideshow on the icons of the Virgin Mary by type from the Eastern Orthodox Church. Our statement of purpose is a visual introduction to the recognition and understanding of Eastern Orthodox iconography. It's spiritual and liturgical prayer through contemplation its influences on Roman Catholic imagery, and to understand the Eastern roots of the image of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, an image that we see quite frequently in many Catholic parishes. Icon is from the Greek word icon that means a likeness, a portrait, an image. Icons can depict Jesus, Mary, the Trinity, Joseph, saints, archangels, and scenes such as feast days, processions, or biblical events. Mary, known as Theotokos, Mother of God, is depicted in five distinct imagery types. Within these five categories are 12 variations. We will cover the five distinct types in this presentation. The first being on the left, Hodogatria, which refers to Mary pointing the way to Jesus. The child Jesus is seated on his mother's arm. Her hand gestures to Jesus to signify that he is the way to salvation. In the center is Eleusa, tender mercy, the child and his mother are touching cheek to cheek. There's more intimacy with the child reaching up to his mother's neck. And sometimes this particular icon type is known as the kiss. Oranta, praying, full frontal, Mary's arms, open hands lifted in prayer. The child is depicted in a medallion on her chest. Agio Sortisa, as intercessor, Mary is shown without the child. Her hands are open in supplication and she ordinarily would be flanking an icon of Christ in the center panel with Saint John the Baptist on the right, as shown in the small example in the center of a personal devotional item that's a triptych referring to three sections. Panacranta, all merciful. Mary is enthroned with Jesus on her lap. She precedes with Christ over the destiny of the world. This one is sometimes shown in Roman Catholic imagery as Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom. In that case, Mary has a crown on her head and she's holding her child who is divine wisdom on her lap and she is seated. Our Lady of Perpetual Help is inspired by the Hadagatria type, pointing to Jesus as the way to God and salvation. We see this on the left, 
where the legend tells us that the child Jesus was frightened when he saw archangels Michael and Gabriel holding the instruments of his passion. He ran into his mother's arms. His sandal is dangling in haste from one of his feet, and he's clutching at her hand and turning to look askance at Saint Gabriel, who is holding the cross and the nails. Saint Michael is holding the spear and the vinegar soaked sponge. On the left, we see often in holy cards or in books, this contemporary image of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. The one in the center is the actual uh, photograph of the icon that is in Rome at the Church of St. Alphonsus, which is the church that is um, administered by the Order of Redemptress of St. Alphonsus Liguori. St. John Paul II called for the church to breathe with both lungs, incorporating rich traditions of both the East and West. In 2011, Pope Benedict's general intention for the month of November was that the Eastern Catholic churches and their venerable traditions may be known and esteemed as a spiritual treasure for the whole church. Tradition tells us that the evangelist Luke wrote the first icon of Mary. An icon is an aid to devotion and prayer. It is a window into heaven and the image of the holy person depicted is in the here and now with the venerator. An icon is known as written rather than painted because it is a prayer and it is not art for decoration. An icon is for personal devotion and for liturgical use in church. Iconoclasm refers to a struggle over the use of icons when in the eighth century, religious and imperial authorities within the Orthodox Church debated and fought over the use of icons for veneration. Iconoclasts, who were clergy, imperial, and political forces, destroyed thousands of icons in churches and outlawed their use in personal devotion. It was a battle divided over the worship of graven images. The battle was as fierce as schisms over the divinity of Christ versus the humanity of Christ, instigated by Emperor Leo III, an iconoclast. Shown in illuminated manuscripts, on the left is an argument about icons, and on the right, showing the destruction of a church under the orders of the iconoclast emperor. As Catholics devoted to Mary, we cherish our usages of sacramental devotion, such as rosaries, hymns, holy cards to our mother Mary. On the left is Our Lady of Lourdes, who is acting as intercessor with Bernadette, shown on the right, Our Lady of Fatima with the shepherd children. In these instances, Mary is acting as mediator, as intercessor, and the baby Jesus is not shown with her. In the center is a variation of Our Lady of Perpetual Help with both mother and child crowned. So it's like a combination of Our Lady Seat of Wisdom as well as Our Lady of Perpetual Help. For the new evangelization, we might want to share a holy card or rosary with someone who doesn't understand. In time, hopefully, 
They will come to use these devotional aids in prayer too. O Mother of Perpetual Help, pray for us. O Mother of Perpetual Help, pray for us. O Mother of Perpetual Help, pray for us. Thank you for joining me in this brief presentation, and I hope that it will inspire you to learn more about Byzantine iconography. Well, that was certainly intriguing. I don't know much about Byzantine art myself, but I have seen um, the picture of Our Lady of Perpetual Help before, though. Um, and so huh, maybe I'll be able to find some more elements of this stuff myself. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, one interesting tidbit that I got from one of uh, Elizabeth's tours back in uh, like, I don't know, two years back when I took Elizabeth's tours um, was that Mary and Jesus are depicted very uniquely. Um, and I'll show you a picture here really quickly. Um, so as you can see, Jesus has like this like red mantle or um, cloak that he's wearing, whereas Mary has a blue one. Um, so red is um, symbolic of blood or humanity, um, whereas blue is uh, depicting divinity. And so in this case, Jesus is clothed with humanity as he took on a human form um, in order for him to do a sacrifice. Whereas blue, um, Mary was actually uh, clothed with the Holy Spirit. And um, so hence the the divinity, right? Um, and so ever since then, I've been sharing that information with other people because it's just such a fascinating uh, tidbit. So um, I hope you guys got a fascinating tidbit out of this whole um, this whole talk. And I hope that you guys can share this with other people. Um, so again, if you uh, have any comments or questions, uh, do leave it in the comments section below. And I will try my best to include uh, your answers in the next video um, or future videos. Um, and then also, if you have any topics that you're interested in um, about St. Dominic's, would love to uh, try and do those. Um, so thank you for joining us, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. So bye!